it's 600 pounds pc build time so make sure to drop a like rating and subscribe that really wasn't meant to rhyme but let's get straight into today's geek or what video so with any build it always starts with how it performs this build will smash the latest AAA titles at 1080p ultra settings anti-aliasing textures the whole lot turned up and also cope with 1440p very well and even dabble into a little bit of 4k although 1440p is kind of the optimal area for this build it will easily do 4k in some of the older titles however whilst achieving 60 and 100 frames per second in stuff like minecraft uh, the world world of warcraft league of legends and csgo but let's get Go straight into the build and start it off with the CPU. The CPU I went for was the Intel Core i5-6500. This is a quad-core CPU and it comes clocked out of the box at 3.2 GHz. It sadly isn't overclockable and whilst a 3.7, 3.8 or 4 GHz clock speed would have been a little bit nicer, uh, Intel's new Skylake chips, 3.2 GHz is plenty and the fact that it's quad-core makes it compatible with all of the latest AAA titles. The motherboard I went for was the ASRock H110M-HDV. It's a Micro ATX motherboard uh, and features Intel's brand new Skylake supporting LGA 1151 socket. Sadly, this build, this board uh, isn't at all good at overclocking them and it can't overclock uh, however the cpu you've gone for is a locked skew meaning you can't overclock that anyway and the locked uh, the unlocked uh, motherboards cost a lot more and overclocking doesn't really give you much uh, scope for performance improvement anyway unless you're doing something ex extreme uh, with water cooling for RAM, I went for Kingston's HyperX Fury. I went for their black uh, kit. I went for one 8GB DIMM, which may seem a little bit weird, uh, but dual channel doesn't pose majorly, major uh, significant advantages anyway. And the fact that this uh, that this RAM has got the DDR4 2133MHz speed will come in super, help, super helpful in years to come when you're upgrading this build or building a new build and you want some DDR4 to lie around. This build is also great for upgrade pass with the motherboard supporting up to Intel's highest end i7 the 6700k uh, the highest end i7 on the consumer platform sorry and also uh, probably their 7700k and 8700k in the future generations when they come out for the storage, I went for Seagate's Barracuda drive. It's a one terabyte hard drive and a three and a half inch form factor. 7200 RPM is as fast as sort of consumer hard drives get, if you will, and is a great option for this build. Sadly, an SSD did have to be sacrificed, which saddened me significantly. However, uh, to get the other parts in this build so high end, it's what I had to do. So, you know, moving on, the Seagate Barracuda drives are great options. The video card is really where the money got spent. Zotax GeForce GTX 974GB video card is insane. Now, the 970 has been around for quite some time actually now, just over a year I believe, a year and a half possibly, uh, but it's, it, it is Intel's newest, uh, Nvidia, sorry, Nvidia's newest uh, 900 series on this kind of, on this price range card. Nvidia aren't due to release new GPUs for around another six months, so you are good. You can wait for the new GPUs if you like, but this build, this this card is great and it's come down in price actually quite a lot. I've been very impressed with what Zotac have been doing and this card is no exception. The case I went for was Thermal Takes Versa H21. Uh, it's a really nice case, USB 3, USB 2. Got everything you need on the side. It's super, super cheap and, you know, great value, value case option. If you do want your PC to look a little bit nicer, you may want to spend more here. But solid gaming performance, it doesn't, it doesn't change anything. So a great option for the build. The power supply I went for was XFX's XT 500 Watt. It's an 80 plus bronze certified power supply in a full size ATX form factor, which not only fits in the case but is fully normal. The 80 plus bronze certification means it's super efficient and is going to save you money at the wall. And I've been really impressed with XFX's power supplies. You can view my review of XFX's uh, of XFX's 500 Watt, uh, well 850 Watt power supply on the channel as well. And that wraps it up for this build. If you did enjoy, find it helpful, all that good stuff, make sure to like, comment, rate, and please do subscribe. Tweet about the build, Facebook it, Instagram it, Vine it, social media, the crap out of the build. And, uh, and yeah, we'll see you in the next Geek What video. Push me down to the ground What goes around comes around You won't put the flame out You can't get to me Say what you wanna say Go take it all away But I'm here to stay No, you can't get to me And there is